The Wii U was Nintendo's 8th generation video game console that was released in 2012, and it wasn't very good. Now, that's not to say that I didn't enjoy the console, but with the Wii U, there's really no debate to be had. Not only was it met with poor reception, it was also a commercial failure and had one of the weakest library of games I've ever seen. Now, there's a lot to talk about, but before we get around to that, what the fuck is the Wii U? Well, the Wii U is a console that was groomed to be the successor to the Wii. Much like its predecessor, the Wii U also had a novel gameplay gimmick of its own by utilizing the Wii U gamepad. And despite its clunky design, it actually featured a pretty standard button layout, with two analog sticks, a D-pad, four buttons, and four shoulder buttons. The gimmick revolves around the touchscreen. You could use the touchscreen to navigate menus, look through an alternate camera, or even play through an entire game directly on the controller. The Wii U game gamepad also had built-in motion controls as well, allowing games to feature some more in-depth asymmetrical gameplay. The console itself was the first Nintendo console to feature HD graphics, but it still felt incredibly similar to the Wii, in both its physical looks and home screen functionality. The only brand new addition to the home screen was the Miiverse, a built-in social network that users could use to interact with other players through text, drawings, screenshots, and sometimes even game footage. Now, that's basically the Wii U in a nutshell and the whole concept seemed pretty inoffensive. Developers could use the Wii U gamepad to clean up some of the menus that cluttered the TV screen, you could maybe play a game on the Wii U gamepad every now and then, and as much as I dislike the Miiverse, it's a pretty minor addition to the console. I mean, if you hated the whole concept of the gamepad, Nintendo even made a Pro Controller so you can just enjoy their games normally. Hell, the Wii U was even backwards compatible with the Wii, so it seemed like a pretty good deal for anyone who missed out on the previous generation. So, what happened? Well, one of the major problems with the Wii U was that it had terrible marketing. Now, obviously, I'm not some sort of marketing expert, but it doesn't take a genius to realize how bad they fucked up. In fact, the initial marketing for the Wii U was so horrible that the majority of people thought that the Wii U was a peripheral for the Wii. And honestly, I don't blame them. Nintendo's reveal trailer for the Wii U at E3 didn't even explain that it's a new console. It just shows off the Wii U gamepad and talks about how you can switch from the TV to the new controller, how you can draw on the new controller, how you can play on the new controller, how you can use motion to control games with the new New controller, how you can get new views of the new controller, how you can stay fit with the new controller, how you can take aim with the new controller, how you can play across the new controller in your TV, how you can make video calls with the new controller, how you can browse on the internet with the new controller, how you can share videos on your TV with the new controller, and I can play games in HD with the new controller. Look at this brand new controller! New controller, new controller, new controller! Meanwhile, they barely even showed the actual console in the whole fucking reveal trailer! They maybe showed it like once or twice, like sitting on a shelf in the corner, but the Wii U console looks exactly the same as the Wii. It might as well be a physical redesign for all I know. I mean, the whole video shows off the Wii U gamepad with Wii remotes, Wii sports, the Wii balance board, and the fucking Wii zapper. They didn't even show the console in the final shot of the reveal trailer. It's fucking ridiculous. Even the name of the console didn't even get this point across. I mean seriously, right off the top of your head, what does the U in Wii U stand for? Fucked if I know! This might be one of the worst names for a console I've ever seen! It even sounds like a fucking peripheral! The Wii U was doomed right from the start. Reggie Fizeme from Nintendo is here to give a new look at the brand new video game console, Wii U. This is the new thing. This is gonna be a new, this is the new system. You, you add it to your Wii or you don't even need to use the Wii. Do you need to use the Wii? Now, that's pretty bad, but let's just say that you finally figured out what the Wii U was. Somehow you deciphered Nintendo's cryptic hidden messages, you somehow cracked the code of the fucking Matrix, and you finally realized that the Wii's brand new controller was actually a brand new Nintendo console. Even if you did all of that. Who gives a shit?
The gimmick isn't revolutionary, it's not intuitive, and it's vaguely interesting to maybe a minor subset of video game players. I mean, it's not even a novel concept to begin with. In the grand scheme of things, the Wii U's gameplay gimmick is basically just a glorified Nintendo 3DS that's broken in half. The touchscreen isn't a brand new gameplay concept, the asymmetrical gameplay with two screens has already been done before, and the Wii U gamepad only slightly changes the way you play video games. So why would anyone be excited about this? In contrast, the Wii was incredibly successful because of how revolutionary the motion controls were. Before the Wii existed, if you wanted to play a game of tennis in a video game, you would have to learn what each button on the controller did. Maybe you wouldn't know how to do certain things, maybe you would would press the wrong button every now and then, and it could be really confusing at times. But with the Wii, you could just swing your arm. You could just swing your fucking arm. That's why the Wii was so popular. It was this revolutionary concept that transcended the entire concept of what video games could be. It allowed casual players to easily play some games and have fun, but it was also interesting enough for hardcore players to get some enjoyment as well. On the other hand, the Wii U gamepad is much more complicated, and you sort of have to have a basic understanding of video games to even perceive the value of having a second screen. Me personally, I can understand why the Wii U gamepad is pretty useful at times. You could use the touchscreen to navigate menus, you could use the gyroscope and the touchscreen to aim with extreme precision, or you can always have a map open on the Wii U gamepad while you're playing a game on the TV. There's a lot of practical utility you can gain by having a second screen, but none of this perceived value is going to translate to casual players because they don't really give a shit about video games. The fact of the matter is that if any of Nintendo's games use two analog sticks, these fuckers are gone. As long as they're playing games with a sideways Wii remote that uses less than three buttons, the entire concept of having a second screen is just fucking pointless. If the second screen provides enough utility to be considered useful, the game's probably too complicated to even appeal to the Wii's casual demographic. So if you're a casual player, the only practical thing the Wii U gamepad can do is play games off the TV. But honestly, this feature just feels incredibly niche. The whole feature sort of plays off this hypothetical scenario in which you're playing the game, but then oh no, your dad walks in and wants to watch the big game. So so I guess you have to stop playing. But, oh wait, with the genius of the Wii U gamepad, I can continue playing the game while dad watches the big game at the same time. Gee golly gosh, the family never has to fight over the TV again and that's all thanks to the Wii U gamepad. Like, sure, that's kind of useful, but unless you're living with a family who uses one TV 24-7, this feature is just useless. I mean, if I was in that situation, I'll just move to a small 30-inch TV in my bedroom and just continue playing games by myself, alone without my family. Still, the idea of being able to play games on the gamepad in bed was actually pretty cool, so I was kind of looking forward to using this feature every now and then. I remember this so vividly. I was playing Captain Toad in the living room, but then I was getting a bit tired, so I said, hey, you know what? I never played this game on the gamepad before. So I grabbed the Wii U gamepad, I brought it to my room, closed the door, and this is fucking useless! In hindsight, the Wii U was never going to be as successful as the Wii. The casual market didn't even know what the Wii U was, no one was interested in the gimmick, and the Wii U was essentially set up to being a financial failure. Still, that's not why the Wii U was bad. I mean, as far as critical reception is concerned, I don't care if Nintendo makes money. As long as the console has great games, I couldn't care less. I mean, the GameCube wasn't lighting the world on fire, but I fucking love that console. It's got some good ass games. Sure, you can always talk about how no one bought the GameCube, how Nintendo was losing its grasp on their share of the market, and how there weren't that many third party games, but are you going to talk shit about Metroid Prime, Resident Evil 4, Kirby City Trial? Four Swords Adventures? Uh, no, cause those games are fucking awesome. You see, the true reason why the Wii U was bad was because it didn't have any fucking games on it. 
for like years. It was like Nintendo was deliberately sabotaging its own console by refusing to put out games from their popular franchises. I mean, when you think about the kinds of great launch games from Nintendo, what can you think of? Perhaps a next gen Zelda, maybe a brand new 3D Super Mario game, a new Super Smash Bros, a new Mario Kart, a really good Metroid game, a brand new fucking Animal Crossing, uh, I don't know, Pokemon. The fact of the matter is that Nintendo could launch a brand new system and just have one of these brand new games and it would sell pretty well. Now, for the Wii U, they didn't do that. Instead, they launched the system with new Super Mario Bros. U, the fourth game in a series of extremely derivative, soulless cash grabs. Now, I don't want to be too redundant because I've talked about this time and time again, but the new Super Mario Bros. fucking sucks. They're not technically bad games, but there's just something about them that comes across as incredibly lazy. I understand that there's those 40-year-old dads out there that really love these games because they remind them of the old Super Mario games, but you you have to realize that this new series of games completely lacks creativity. I mean, Super Mario World invented Yoshi. You know what I mean? They could have just made Super Mario Bros. 4 with some new levels, but instead, they came up with the concept of Mario riding a dinosaur, and then they ran with that idea and made something new that everyone loved and still loves to this day. Meanwhile, new Super Mario Bros. U feels like it was designed by a board of executives that just want to sell the same nostalgic bullshit over and over again. But then they forgot that they actually have to add new things to the game, so then they're like, oh wait, we actually have to do something. I guess we'll add an acorn power up. Ah, acorn Mario. Ship it. We did it guys. It's a brand new game. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that if Nintendo was trying to launch a brand new system that would actually excite people, this is probably the worst game to do it. Another launch game for the Wii U was Nintendo Land, which was alright. This game was basically a mini game collection that demonstrated the use of the Wii U gamepad, similar to the way that Wii Sports showed off the motion controls for the Wii. The only major difference between these two games is that Nintendo Land is essentially the same concept as Wii Sports, but just not as good, which is actually pretty symbolic. You see, the genius of the Wii was that Wii Sports came with the system for free. Right out of the box, you get the Wii Remote, the Nunchuck, and a free game that demonstrates the use of the motion controls. For the Wii U, Nintendo decided to do this stupid thing where they shipped two different sets of the Wii U, where only the deluxe set included Nintendo Land. If that wasn't dumb enough, some of the mini games in Nintendo Land also required you to use Wii Remotes and Nunchucks, despite the fact that they weren't even included with the console. Why would you do that? If Nintendo Land was supposed to show off the Wii U gamepad, why would you make it so you have to use all the old Wii shit to do multiplayer? To make matters worse, if you decided to play Nintendo Land by yourself, you can't even play all the mini games. Like, what the fuck? I mean, with Wii Sports, you'd have to buy more controllers to play multiplayer tennis, baseball, and boxing, but if you bought the Wii and only did single player, you could at least play every mini game included. With Nintendo Land, they designed a lot of the games to not only use Wii Remotes and Nunchucks, but also Wii Motion Plus. So, if you only bought the Wii U Deluxe set with Nintendo Land, you can't play three of the multiplayer mini games, you can't do multiplayer in the Zelda mini game, without Wii Motion Plus, and you can't do multiplayer in the Metroid minigame without nunchucks. I mean, the game's alright, but it's literally just the whole concept of Wii Sports if it was pulled off way worse. Another noteworthy launch game for the Wii U was the horribly named Zombie U, which I actually really enjoyed. It was basically just a zombie survival horror game that used the Wii U gamepad in interesting ways. You managed all your inventory on the gamepad in real time, you could look through the gamepad and use it to scan the environment, and overall, it was pretty good. It wasn't worth buying a Wii U at launch, but I had a fun time with it. 
Now, for the most part, these three games were basically the only noteworthy launch games on the Wii U. There were some ports for some AAA games like Assassin's Creed 3, Mass Effect 3, and Black Ops 2, but if you bought a Wii U at launch, you probably don't give a shit. Still, the launch for the Wii U wasn't horrible. Nintendo could have maybe released one more game, but besides that, it was pretty standard for a console launch. Despite all the issues with the Wii U, Nintendo still managed to sell around 3 million units by the end of 2012 which was actually somewhat decent. In the grand scheme of things, the Wii U started off with a lot of potential. But, this is where things get bad. So now it's 2013, the Wii U's been out for about a month and a half, the initial hype of the console's release is starting to wear down, and now everyone's just waiting for some good games. Perhaps it might be a 3D Super Mario game, a next gen Zelda, maybe a brand new Super Smash Bros, but for whatever reason, that doesn't happen. In fact, within the first year of the system's release, Nintendo basically released nothing. It kind of made the Wii U look like shit. I mean, one of the only reasons people buy Nintendo consoles is to play Nintendo's games, and if the Wii U doesn't have any Nintendo games, why would you get one? Unless you were a hardcore Nintendo fan that just wanted the console at launch, there was literally no reason to pick one up. In fact, one of the only good games released in 2013 was Monster Hunter 3U, which was made by Capcom. If Nintendo released any good games in 2013, I might not have tried Monster Hunter at all, because it honestly seemed kinda shitty. I remember trying out the game demo and having having no idea how to play the game. The weapons felt wonky, the demo didn't even explain the controls, the game looked like a shitty PS2 game, and nothing seemed to make any sense. Luckily for Capcom, Nintendo decided to release nothing. So I actually decided to put in the effort to learn how to play the game. Once I actually did the mandatory five hours of research on the internet and learned how everything worked, the entire game started to finally make sense and it was fucking awesome. Then, after a very long wait, Nintendo released Game and Wario. I mean, the whole concept of WarioWare is amazing. Every game has you playing through a gauntlet of quick little micro games, the speed of the game constantly increases over time, and it's such a fun idea. I mean, the Wii U gamepad is perfect for WarioWare. You can hold the Wii U gamepad in different positions like in the Wii version, and you can create so many brand new micro games. Oh my god, WarioWare is so fucking good! Wait, what? No micro games in the, the fucking game. They didn't fucking do that? Well, what the fuck is this? It's not a, it's not a WarioWare game. Oh. They didn't, they didn't do that. Oh, it's nothing! Oh, okay, okay, Nintendo released nothing. Shortly after, Nintendo did eventually release Pikmin 3, which was pretty fun, but I didn't really give a shit. The only reason I played Pikmin 3 was because I basically got it for free, and even then, I eventually ended up dropping it. I still had a decent time with it, but I mean, is this really the game that's going to sell the Wii U? fucking Pikmin 3. It just doesn't seem like a good game to ship units. Personally, I feel like the kinds of people who really like Pikmin would have probably bought the Wii U at launch, regardless of whether or not it came out. And even then, I'm pretty sure even Pikmin fans would rather have a next-gen Zelda, or a brand new Super Smash Bros, or fucking anything other than Pikmin 3. Now, if we really want to talk about a game that no one likes, let's talk about The Wonderful 101. This game was produced by Nintendo and developed by Platinum and it's basically the best fucking game ever made. I'm not even joking. The Wonderful 101 has some incredibly good combat, a really fun premise, fantastic music, a ton of over-the-top spectacle, an infinite amount of replay value, it has one of the greatest endings to a video game ever, and it's just a fucking riot from beginning to end. It's not only the best game on the Wii U, it's also one of the best games ever made, and no one gave a shit. Platinum made the best fucking game ever, it came out with no competition, and no one bought it. Even the majority of the people who bought the Wii U, the people who have literally nothing to fucking play, even they didn't buy the wonderful 101. Like, sure, I understand this game isn't going to sell Wii U's, but where the fuck were the three million people who bought the Wii U at launch? This game only sold like 10,000 copies when it came out. 
That's fucking ridiculous. All right, if you bought the Wii U at launch and you didn't play the wonderful 101, you're fucking crazy. I don't know what's wrong with you. This game was so fucking good. Here's the best fucking game ever. Oh, no one cares. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck me. Oh, yeah. New Super Mario Bros. U. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good game. Yeah, fuck you. The next game that Nintendo released was the Wind Waker HD, an HD remake of a GameCube game. Now, don't get me wrong, the Wind Waker HD is a pretty nice remake, and it was obviously made to keep fans happy, but why did it have to come to this? Did Nintendo not realize that they wouldn't have enough games to sell to people? I mean, seriously, this game took six months to develop. It was announced, developed, and released within the same year. Did it really take them this long to look at their calendar and realize that they didn't release anything? I mean, things were so bad at this point that Nintendo did a $50 price drop on the Wii U because no one was buying it. Like, what the fuck was their plan? I mean, I love The Wind Waker. It's one of my favorite GameCube games. It's a nice remake, but what the fuck? So, after a very long time, Nintendo finally decided to release Super Mario 3D World. I had a lot of fun with this game, but I would be lying if I said that I was super excited to play it. I mean, when Nintendo announced this game at E3, it was almost kind of disappointing. At this point, fans had been waiting almost six years for a successor to Super Mario Galaxy, and then they announced this pseudo 2D 3D Super Mario game. It seemed like a huge step backwards. In retrospect, it was actually a lot better than I initially thought. But at the same time, it wasn't all that exciting. And if Nintendo was trying to sell Wii U's, they needed something that was going to excite people. Nintendo desperately needed some crazy next-gen experience, and frankly, Super Mario 3D World was just a bit too simplistic. Now, I know what some people might be thinking. Hey Sam, these are all some pretty good Wii U games. What's the problem? I mean, the Wii U doesn't sound that bad. Well, while that may be true, you have to realize that it's been a fucking year. At this point, the Wii U's been out for all of 2013 and Nintendo has nothing to show for it. I mean, all respect to Capcom and Platinum for making some great games, but if you bought the Wii U expecting some classic Nintendo games, you're fucked. In the grand in the scheme of things, Pikmin 3 and Super Mario 3D World were the only new Nintendo games that were good. I mean, seriously, what were they doing for the past two years? Why wasn't Super Smash Bros ready? Where's Star Fox, Kirby, Metroid, fucking Donkey Kong? Seriously, where's anything? Mario Kart isn't out yet? Yoshi? No Yoshi game? You couldn't even shit out one of those? You couldn't have at least one of these things ready? What was Nintendo even trying to do? Well, we have to remember that we're talking about the Wii U, a successor console to the Wii. So obviously, Nintendo was placing their priorities on releasing a bunch of casual bullshit that no one cared about. Not only was New Super Mario Bros. U a launch title, but Nintendo also released Wii Fit U, Wii Party U, Wii Sports Club, and Mario and Sonic at the fucking Olympics. Believe it or not, Nintendo released all these games in 2013, which is kind of sad. I mean, why did Nintendo place their priority on putting out so much of this casual bullshit when they literally have nothing on their console? Did they really think that people would buy an entirely new console to play Wii Sports and Wii Fit for the third time in a row? Well, yeah. They did. Like I said before, this is the Wii U. If you thought the Nintendo was going to release some amazing next-gen games, then you clearly don't remember what Nintendo was doing with the Wii. With the Wii, Nintendo launched the system with some high-quality first-party games to please their hardcore audience. But then they realized that they could just make a quick buck by releasing mediocre trash to all the casual dipshits who bought the Wii for Wii Sports. I mean, if you don't believe me, just look at their top Top selling Wii games. Wii Sports, New Super Mario Bros, Wii Fit, Wii Party, Mario and Sonic at the fucking Olympics. So with the Wii U, Nintendo decided to, once again, release casual trash to make a quick buck. Except this time, you're not getting those high quality first party titles. You see, the sad thing about the Wii U was that all that casual garbage that originated from the Wii, that stupid shit no one gave a fuck about, 
Those were supposed to be the good games. If the Wii U was just as popular as the Wii, these games would be the best sellers. I mean, if you look at the Wii U from the most cynical viewpoint possible, it's like all of Nintendo's dumb decisions will finally start to make sense. I mean, launching the system with new Super Mario Bros U seems like an incredibly stupid decision. It's boring, it lacks creativity, it's not a next-gen experience, but if Nintendo assumed that they still had their massive casual audience, it would have been a really smart move. I mean, New Super Mario Bros. Wii sold 30 million copies. I mean, if it sold three times more than Super Mario Galaxy, it must be everyone's favorite Mario game. You see, with the Wii U, it sort of felt like Nintendo had this out of touch baby boomer attitude, where they didn't realize that the Wii was just a fad. With the Wii, Nintendo had garnered this incredibly large audience of players. But in the grand scheme of things, most of Nintendo's casual audience bought the Wii to play Wii Sports, maybe they bought one or two Nintendo games, and then they checked out. They stopped playing video games, they're gone, they're never coming back. Meanwhile, Nintendo was basically just out of touch with reality because they're just basing all their decisions off of their inflated sales numbers. So, when they were developing the Wii U, Nintendo planned to continue to appeal to this casual audience without realizing that they all basically fucked off at this point. Anyone who would buy the Wii U at this point wants to play some high quality Nintendo games, but they barely released anything. It might not sound that bad when you look at the game list, but you have to realize that Pikmin 3 came out in August. If we're ignoring Game & Wario, there was essentially a 9 month gap after launch where Nintendo released nothing. Even all the dumb casual shit wasn't out until the end of the year. Seriously, I'm not even joking. Wii Party U, October 25th. Wii Fit U, November 1st. Wii Sports Club, November 7th. Mario & Sonic at the goddamn fucking Sochi Olympics, November 15th. Like, this is pathetic. Now. I'm a cynical asshole, right? I know that, you know that, we all know that. If you've ever seen any of my videos, I don't have to prove anything. Even if we take the most cynical approach to this situation and say that Nintendo was just planning on selling the fuck out to their massive casual audience, even if we assume that, the Wii U would have still been complete shit even by their standards. I mean, even the dipshits who bought the Wii for fucking Wii Sports wouldn't even have bought the Wii U because none of this shit was out yet. If Nintendo was trying to sell the fuck out to their massive casual audience, they didn't even do that right. Isn't that fucking crazy? I mean, how fucking incompetent do you have to be to fuck this up? Why did this happen? Well, the real reason why the Wii U was bad was because Nintendo rushed the system out a year earlier than they should have in order to release it before the PS4 and Xbox One. On paper, this seemed like a good idea, because this was something that Microsoft did with the Xbox 360, and it actually paid off incredibly well. For Nintendo, it seemed like they were trying to do the same thing with the Wii U, but the only issue is that they rushed out the console and didn't have any of their games ready. Of course, the only reason anyone buys Nintendo consoles is to play their games, so it basically defeated the entire purpose of getting ahead of the competition. I mean, in hindsight, if the Wii U was released alongside the PS4 and Xbox One, I don't think it would have been nearly as bad. They could have launched the system with Super Mario 3D World and Monster Hunter 3U. They maybe could have spaced out new Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3, and The Wonderful 101 alongside their other games, and I think they would have been fine. Now, don't get me wrong, the Wii U was never going to be as successful as the Wii, but if they didn't rush the release of the console, it at least the Wii U wouldn't have been associated with all of this negativity. I mean, 2013 was fucking brutal for the Wii U. Ubisoft was delaying Rayman Legends in order to strip it of its Wii U exclusivity, and EA Senior Engineer publicly announced that the Wii U is crap, with EA later announcing that they had no games in development, the horrible sales numbers for the Wii U were starting to come out, Bethesda announced that they had no games in development, the second largest supermarket chain in the UK confirmed that they weren't planning on restocking the Wii U at all because it sold like shit, people literally thought that Nintendo was going bankrupt, and all of 2013 is this constant stream of just horrible news about how terrible the Wii U is, and how Nintendo is becoming irrelevant in the game industry, and how Nintendo will have to stop making consoles, and then Pikmin 3 comes out. Like, 
What? Who the fuck is gonna buy a Wii U after hearing all that shit? Fucking nobody, that's who! This started to send the Wii U into an inescapable death spiral. You see, the Wii U launched with some pretty poor launch titles, which as a result, caused people to not want to buy a Wii U because there aren't enough good games for the system, which then caused third-party developers to not make games for the Wii U because no one's buying it, which then continues to cause more people to not buy the Wii U because there's still no good games on it. And since Nintendo continues to not release good games for the system, no one wants to buy a Wii U, which then causes more third-party developers to continue not wanting to develop games because no one's buying the Wii U, because there aren't enough good games on the system. So now no one's making games for the Wii U because no one's buying it, and no one's buying it because Nintendo didn't release any good games. Now, Nintendo did eventually announce and release some great games on the system, but by the time those games came out, it was too late. The damage was done. The Wii U was fucked. The console wasn't making that much money. Nintendo was basically the only company making games for the console. Not that many fans were happy. And after a while, Nintendo just abandoned ship. They just fucking gave up. That's why the Wii U was bad. In the best case scenario, the Wii U might have been an underrated console with a really niche appeal, but 2013 solidified the Wii U as being a console that's objectively shit. So now it's 2014, and uh, shit's fucked. Right out of the gate, the Wii U was an unmitigated disaster, and there was nothing Nintendo could do that was going to save it. Nintendo realized that appealing to their casual market didn't work, they knew that their marketing was terrible, they knew the gimmick was shit, they knew they fucked up the Wii U's launch, they finally get it. Still, the instant failure of the Wii U put Nintendo into a really shitty situation. I mean, at this point, the best way to fix the issues with the Wii U was to simply just start over from scratch. But here's the problem. If Nintendo discontinued the Wii U within only a couple of years, they would be burning some of their most loyal customers. The same customers who expected the Wii U to have a bunch of games that Nintendo haven't released yet. Like I said in my Wii video, people buy Nintendo consoles with the expectation that they'll play some good Nintendo games. And if Nintendo doesn't deliver on that promise, they're fucked. So in order to please the customers who bought the Wii U in good faith, Nintendo decided to stick it out for a couple of years in order to keep fans happy. And what better way to please their loyal customers by actually releasing some good video games? In the grand scheme of things, 2014 started to mark the end of the post-Wii era. The instant failure of the Wii U forced Nintendo to finally transition away from all the terrible shit they've done with the Wii. Much like how the Wii transitioned from high quality first party titles to stupid casual bullshit, the Wii U transitioned from stupid casual bullshit to high quality first party titles. The year started off pretty well with Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Now, me personally, I never really cared about Donkey Kong in general. So while I wasn't too excited for this game to come out, at least Nintendo was releasing some good games. Then around the end of May, Nintendo released Mario Kart 8, which was one of the first Nintendo games that I was actually really excited for. It was a pretty good blend of all the elements from Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 7. The HD graphics for the game looked amazing Amazing, and the brand new addition of the anti-gravity sections really mixed things up for the better. Mario Kart 8 was fucking awesome! At the time of its release, Mario Kart 8 might have been the only game on the system that actually warranted buying the Wii U, and it seemed like Nintendo realized this as well. In fact, Nintendo was so desperate to sell consoles that they ran this whole promotion where, if you registered Mario Kart 8 on Club Nintendo, you would receive another $60 game for free. Not only did Mario Kart 8 sell around 2.8 million copies during Nintendo's buy one get one free promotion, it also became the top selling Wii U game of all time. Then a couple of months later, Nintendo released Hyrule Warriors, which is a Zelda themed Dynasty Warriors game. It's a pretty fun game to play, but objectively, it's incredibly schlocky and kind of trash. Hilariously enough, this game was developed by Team Ninja, the same guys who ruined Metroid. So obviously, they were probably trying to give Zelda high heels and turn her into a giant titty monster or some shit, but luckily, a new 
Kuma was overseeing the project and put a stop to that shit. That's probably why this game turned out as good as it did. So if you just want a shallow game that will give you some fun Zelda fan service, it's probably one of the best games ever made. But if you want a good character action game with some fun combat, just play The Wonderful 101 or literally any other Platinum game. Speaking of Platinum, Bayonetta 2 came out around the same time as a Wii U exclusive, which was pretty fucking crazy. Of course, the only reason Bayonetta 2 was released as an exclusive was because Nintendo saved the entire project by funding most of it themselves, which was pretty awesome. Hell, Nintendo even funded a port for the original Bayonetta and included both games for the price of one. Like, goddamn Nintendo, that's some good shit. One of the perfect ways Nintendo closed out 2014 was with Super Smash Bros for Wii U. This was the be all end all game to get people to buy the console. And I think it worked out pretty well. A lot of the new characters drove a lot of hype. It had an incredibly large roster. The continued emphasis on local multiplayer actually made the Wii U stand out a bit. They released a GameCube adapter at launch to please the hardcore fans of the series. And overall, it's just a really good game. It even ended up becoming one of the fastest sellers selling Wii U games ever. With that said, you'd think that the 3DS and Wii U versions of Super Smash Bros would have made Nintendo a shit ton of money. Well, hilariously enough, one of the most profitable things to come out of the release of Super Smash Bros were the fucking Amiibos. On the Super Smash Bros Wii U release date, Nintendo also sold these little plastic figures with NFC chips inside in order to mark it off of the incredibly lucrative toys to life genre. If you placed an Amiibo on the Wii U tablet, the controller would scan the chip inside the figure, which would unlock something based off of the game you were playing. It was kind of a genius idea. I mean, if you're the kind of person who jerks off to Nintendo, why wouldn't you want to own little figures of all your favorite Nintendo characters? In fact, people went so nuts over this shit that it literally made Nintendo billions of dollars. One of the last games Nintendo released in 2014 was Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which is pretty good. They basically took those Captain Toad minigame levels from Super Mario 3D World and turned it into a full-fledged puzzle game. I mean, that's about it. Captain Toad is the hypest shit. Then in 2015, Nintendo released Splatoon, which was fucking awesome. When they showed off this game in 2014, it kind of looked like a game that Nintendo would never make, but I'm surprised by how good it turned out. I mean, in terms of using the Wii U gamepad, this game fucking nailed it. You always have a map on the Wii U gamepad, you can use the touchscreen to jump straight to other players, and you can use the gyroscope to aim with mouse-like precision. The game had a ton of interesting mechanics, it had constant free updates with new maps and weapons, and overall it's just really fun to play. Splatoon is a good ass game. Now, one game I was a bit iffy on was Super Mario Maker. It's an entire game where you can create and play custom created Super Mario levels. And overall, it's a really cool idea. Using the touch screen to create Super Mario levels by dragging and dropping blocks is actually a really good use of the Wii U gamepad. And I was pretty surprised that Nintendo would release a game that's entirely dependent on user created levels. Now, I bet this game was a lot of fun for a lot of people, but I couldn't care less. Me personally, I grew up playing a ton of custom Super Mario levels off of emulators, so I already knew that it wasn't going to be my thing. The main issue with user created content is that you usually have to sift through the shit in order to get to the good stuff, and even then, that still doesn't stop people from highly praising really boring levels. Like oh boy, it's another recreation of World 1-1, like wow, I'm glad I bought this fucking game. Oh cool, it's another level where you don't touch the controller and the game plays itself. Like, cool, I guess I'll just sit here and do nothing. What a fun level. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that if I'm playing through some custom Super Mario levels, I prefer that they were made by a team of professionals instead of some dipshit kid. Now, after Super Mario Maker was released, I feel like this was the end of the Wii U. The console finally had some good games, a lot of the hardcore fans were somewhat satisfied with what they got, and it seemed like Nintendo was finally starting to move away from the Wii U. Near the start of 2015, they announced that they were working on the NX, and the rest of the Wii U's life cycle was mostly spent anticipating what their next console would be. At this point, no one seemed to give a shit about the Wii U. Because of this, it sort 
sort of felt like everything onwards was a bit lackluster, since Nintendo was clearly just dumping whatever Wii U games they had left. They released Kirby and the Rainbow Curse early in the year, which was clearly made to justify the use of the Wii U gamepad, despite the fact that it should have been a 3DS game. Mario Party 10 also came out early in the year, but it still had that dumb cart from Mario Party 9, so that game was shit. Yoshi's Woolly World came out after Super Mario Maker, which was basically just a bland Yoshi game that had nice graphics. Nintendo also released Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, which was basically just an excuse to sell more of those fucking Amiibos. Twilight Princess HD came out early in 2016, which was probably the least needed HD remake in the entire series. Pokémon Tournament also came out, but honestly, I just didn't care. Nintendo also released a Star Fox game that could have been good, but then they decided to force in the use of the Wii U gamepad for some dumb motion control bullshit, and then Paper Mario Color Splash came out, which was once again, another spin-off Paper Mario game that no one wanted. So as you can see, the quality of games ranges from slightly average to fucking awful, with the only noteworthy games being Twilight Princess HD and Pokémon Tournament. As a result, the last couple of years of the Wii U's life cycle was pretty boring, because it seemed like Nintendo was saving most of their good games for the Nintendo Switch. In fact, the Nintendo Switch looked fucking awesome. The second I saw the initial reveal trailer, it made the Wii U look like shit. Like, god damn, I can't wait to throw this thing in the fucking garbage. Like, fuck the Wii U. Now, one of the very last games to come out on the Wii U was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But, not really. I mean, at this point, the Wii U was essentially dead. The console was discontinued by the end of 2016, and Breath of the Wild was also coming out on the Nintendo Switch as well. And as as much as I hate to say it, that's the definitive version of the game. It's kind of sad, because Breath of the Wild would have been the game that could have redeemed the Wii U. I mean, in terms of gameplay, Breath of the Wild was a beautiful return to The Legend of Zelda. It had the core staples of the Zelda series with exploration, sword combat, and puzzle solving, but it also created all sorts of interesting gameplay mechanics that built upon it. This was a game that truly felt like a modern masterpiece. The Wii U could have been the only console that had the latest, most critically acclaimed Zelda game of recent history, but now the Nintendo Switch just showed up out of nowhere and stole all the valor. In fact, Act, the Nintendo Switch turned out to be essentially the Wii U, but just better in every single way. The asymmetrical gameplay was essentially gutted from the Switch, which ultimately removed a lot of the gimmick shit that no one liked, and switching between the handheld and console mode was completely superior to playing games on the Wii U gamepad because it actually fucking worked. To make matters even worse, almost every noteworthy game on the Wii U was ported directly to the Switch with more content. Mario Kart 8 was ported to the Switch with all the DLC, new racers, and even a brand new battle mode. Bayonetta 2 was ported to the Switch along with Bayonetta 1 as well, with the promise of Bayonetta 3 in the future. The Switch is getting a brand new Monster Hunter, which is basically Monster Hunter 3U, but with way more monsters to fight. Hyrule Warriors got ported to the Switch with all the DLC and all the content from the 3DS version. Super Smash Bros is being ported over to the Switch as an updated Ultimate version that basically has every character ever. Splatoon 2 came out on the Switch, which is essentially exactly the same as Splatoon, but just better in every single way. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was ported over to the Switch with a new funky mode. Pokémon Fighters got ported to the Switch with a ton of new content as well. New Super Mario Bros. U is getting ported to the Switch, which includes all the DLC and two new playable characters. Even Captain Toad. Even Captain Toad got ported to the Switch! I mean, talk about kicking the Wii U when it's down. Nintendo threw the Wii U under the bus. They don't give a fuck. Now, I'll always go back and play the Wonderful 101 because I love that game, but the second that gets ported to something else, I'm throwing my Wii U in the trash. Seriously, I'm not even joking. Without the Wonderful 101, there's literally no reason to own a Wii U because all of the good games have essentially become outdated. I mean, who the fuck is going to plug in their Wii U to play Super Smash Bros when the Switch version has the exact same roster with more characters and stages? Fucking no one! This game is worthless! Throw it in the fucking garbage!
Man, I don't even know what to say at this point. Everything about the Wii U is so fucking depressing. I mean, I've never seen a console get shafted as hard as the Wii U. I mean, the entire console was shit, most of the good games are completely outdated now, and honestly, I don't really care. Like, fuck this shit! So, to end on a positive note, I suppose the best thing about the Wii U was that it was so terrible that it actually forced Nintendo to get their shit together. It was a time where Nintendo was forced to work up from the bottom and gain back the respect of their hardcore audience. You see, the true legacy of the Wii U is that it launched with new Super Mario Bros. U and ended with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And if that isn't a fucking transition, I don't know what is. So, as much as the Wii U sucked, I do have a lot of respect for Nintendo for getting their act together and actually making some good games again. Because at the end of the day, that's why I grew up liking Nintendo. I never gave a shit about their wacky, stupid ideas, and I definitely didn't support Nintendo because they were family friendly. The reason I grew up liking Nintendo was because they just so happened to make good games, and that's about it. So now that they finally moved past all this dumb Wii shit, I'm actually kind of excited to see what happens next. Whatever Nintendo is planning on doing in the future, hopefully it involves porting the wonderful 101, because the Wii U FUCKING SUCKS!